I was kind of hoping we could start with the big picture, the global macro view for you today. Yeah, it's like watching the same movie happen over and over again when you read history. So uh, there, <clears throat> I learned in my life that many of the things that surprised me happened didn't happen in my lifetime, but they happened many times before. And there were three big things that are taking place, big forces that are happening in our lifetimes that happened many times before. Um, and they are the creation of an enormous amount of debt and the printing of money to um, service those debts. And so the economic consequences, inflation and what it means for growth and type money and all of that. The second is um, the levels of internal conflict are the highest since the 1930s to 45 period and other times before. Lots of internal conflict, the emergence of populism of the left and the right, uh, the largest wealth gaps since um, the 19. Uh, 30 to 45 period. And so a lot of internal conflict fighting, populism on the left, populism on the right, that's a threatening to our system. And number three is um, the external conflict, which some people call, you know, the great um, powers conflict, the rising of a great power to challenge an existing great power uh, and to challenge the world order. You know, the way it works is you, you you usually have a big disagreement, you have a fight, you have a war. The winners of the war create the new system, the new order. And that happened in 1945. And then they're a dominant power and they sort of set the rules. And then there's the emergence of the other power and, and um, that conflict. Um, and so those three things, each one of them, the last time they happened in this magnitudes was 1930 to 45. And when they come together like that, it's sort of a perfect storm. And so I studied, I needed to study what happened before. And I, because these rises and declines take place on average about 75 years, give or take about 50. I mean, these ups and downs, I needed to go back uh, about 500 years and watch them. And I watched the same thing uh happen uh, over and over again for the same reasons and i also paid attention to two other big influences um so let's call it the fourth influence is uh the impact of nature uh droughts floods and pandemics have actually killed more people than wars and um and toppled more uh governments and systems so they are a big influence. Uh, so something like climate change and what we're seeing is a disruptive influence. It's a costly and disruptive influence. And then number five is the good one over long periods of time, which is um, the inventiveness and doing uh, things better, um, creating a uh, invention, particularly technologies, which has meant that life expectancies have increased, per capita income has increased, and so on. And so when we look at that, we see those five big forces are driving everything. And um, and so that's that dynamic. Now, we could talk about each one of them, but we also, and, and when we do, but we also have to remember that they affect each other in a mutually reinforcing way. Wow. Uh, that was a fantastic first answer. And just to recap, I heard you talk about the five um, most important drivers, um, just for the folks recapping here, um, the debt money economic uh, dynamic, the internal conflict dynamic, the external conflict dynamic, acts of nature that you mentioned, also human invention and technology development. Um, you know, Ray, when you kind of look at the body of work that you put together in the changing world order, um, publishing it in 2021, and here we are, um, in the second quarter of 2023, are you more worried now than when you put out the book? It's, it's tracking the typical cycle. Um, and that's why I really want to draw attention to it. Um, uh, you know, in, in order to draw attention to it, there's the book, but there's also a free video on YouTube called the changing world order and describes it, but it, it lays out the cause effect relationship. So it's like a disease, you know, and there are these stages, cycles, 
um, and we're in stage five. So um, it continues to track that and we should get specific about that. What I mean, for example, um, if you want me to delve into the mind. Oh, yes, please. Okay. Um, okay. Um, in the, in these cycles, there's, there are short term cycles that build up to create a long term cycle. So, uh, for example, we're used to, uh, what's commonly called the business cycle or the short term debt cycle in which there's a recession when economic weakness is there's economic weakness and low inflation and then the central bank provides credit and that stimulates activity and then you have the pickup and the good time in the economy but then it raises inflation and tightness and so on and then they create tight money and then you go through the contraction again and so on so since 1945 there have been 12 and a half of those cycles. On average, they're about seven years long, give or take about three years. Um, so if you say, okay, where are we in that cycle? We're in the business cycle. We're about halfway through. We're in the part of the cycle where the tightening of monetary policy to fight inflation begins to cause the cracks. And, and that's where we are. Okay, now those add up to a big cycle because um, debt rises relative to incomes through that because everybody wants the higher up. And so they just keep doing that. And so we have a lot of um, debt assets and debt liabilities. Um, and, you know, we think of there's, there's a debt that you owe, but one man's debt is another man's assets. And so you have to keep interest rates high enough that it compensates for inflation for holding it because if you don't nobody's going to then want to lend and you have a problem but you have to have interest rates not so high that they crack the economy and so when you have debt a lot of debt assets and a lot of debt app liabilities having that balancing act is not easy and so because we had the imbalance the central banks of the world had to come in there and be buyers they had to print money and buy that debt to make a balance at an acceptable interest rate so we have uh, that problem that produced inflation and uh, we have the financial problem now that's connected also to what's happening in the world order because the united states and china most importantly are approaching um, um a war the greater risk of war and also Russia is uh, is in that, that there have been, um, um, you know, supply lines, um, supply chains have been broken and supply lines and so on. And that has worsened the set of circumstances for reasons having to do with geopolitical and so on. 